Hello and welcome to the ConsistentOptionsIncome.com Paris Trading Course. This course will consist of a number of short videos that should give you a good idea of how to successfully trade equity pairs. This is lesson number one and should give you a good overview of pairs trading. Let's get started. Okay, even though the website is named Consistent Options Income, the Paris Trading Strategy does not involve options we are exclusively looking at trading stocks against each other. I created the pairs trading course in response to requests from options traders who had taken my options strategy course. Primarily with the options strategy we're trying to develop or create an income stream. However, I used to get a lot of questions from people who were saying, well, what should I do with the balance of my account? Because if you're trading options for income, you probably don't want to put all of your account towards that particular strategy. So what do you do with the rest of your account? The rest of your account that may be sitting idle that you want to do some wealth building. And for me, that was pairs trading. And so although I could give people some general pointers, there was a obvious interest in learning a little bit more about what pairs trading was and that's the reason I created this course. My goal with pairs trading course is to teach you everything that you would need to know to trade pairs on your own. I don't necessarily want you to be dependent on me. However, my hope is that once you get into pairs trading and you start understanding it, you'll realize that there's a lot of drudgery, you know, finding good stocks to trade in pairs, finding the good pairs that trade well together, and doing this on a day in and day out basis there's actually quite a bit of drudgery and a lot of math and calculations that I've automated for myself and my hope is that you'll find the pairs trading service useful you'll already know how to trade the pairs basically you'll just be using the service to get the ideas instead of having to do all that drudgery yourself okay what is pairs trading it's also called equity pairs trading or statistical arbitrage. The idea is that we would buy and sell two very similar stocks, companies that may have a historical relationship of some kind. Uh, the examples that people use frequently are Coke and Pepsi. Everybody knows Coke and Pepsi. They pretty much sell the same stuff. They should be kind of related. We assume going in before we do our research that they have some sort of historical relationship. Similar businesses should move in similar ways. Now sometimes you may think two businesses are similar, that they kind of do the same thing, but their stocks don't trade in a way that's similar. So we need to be able to parse through all the possible combinations of stocks out there and figure out ones that have this sort of fundamental relationship that make it easy for us to trade them as a pair but also have sort of a mechanical, mathematical correlation of some kind. Now once we find two stocks that have this good historical relationship, we intend to buy the weak stock and sell the strong stock. So basically we, we, we assume that they have a relationship and now the relationship's got out of whack somehow and we're going to sell the strong one and buy the weak one. And then when they return to the historical relationship, we should be able to make a profit. That's the basic tenet. The profit that we're going to get is basically this return to a mean or average or historical relationship. There's a bunch of different ways you can measure it, but the basic point is that we believe that there's some sort of historical relationship and that they, these two stocks that we're trading will return to that at some point. Now, you might have heard about reversion to the mean a lot in different kinds of stock trading but if you've tried it you probably realize pretty quickly that stock prices don't necessarily return to a mean so if you're trading some sort of oscillator and you're planning on the oscillator returning to the mean to make a, a nice trade on that stock you realize that prices of stocks don't necessarily have this mean reverting relationship it doesn't happen all the time or it doesn't happen enough that you can make profit by trading that way frequently that doesn't give you much of an edge. However, when it comes to this pair relationship, if we find good pairs, they do have this sort of 
mean reverting behavior where the two stocks do return to their historical relationship. So this is an edge that we have. It's not a big edge. We're not going to make hit home run trades here. But the idea is to put that the idle capital in our accounts to work, gaining small, high probability profits. Now one of the things that's working for us is the stock market hierarchy. There have been a number of studies that have shown that the whole stock market tends to influence single stocks the most. In other words, single stocks have their own sort of life cycle, they have their own sorts of issues, people are looking at them for different reasons. But generally speaking, even though you think a stock's going down, if the market's going up, it's probably not going to go down as much as you thought it was. In the same way, the stock market influences sectors and industries. And so those industries are going to be influenced to a large degree by what the whole stock market's doing. And in turn, those sectors and industries are going to influence the single stocks. And so if we have two stocks that are in, let's say, a you know basic materials industry group, those two stocks are not only be influenced by the stock market, so they're going to be traveling in a similar way, but the industry is also going to have an impact on that. And then, lastly, their sort of historical or similar business relationship is going to have an influence. So we've got a lot of momentum and weight behind the whole stock market, the sector and industry, and the two uh, individual stocks that keep these two stocks that we've picked traveling in a similar way. So why trade pairs? Well, the first thing is that pairs trading gives you a great deal of protection against large market moves. There's an old axiom that, you know, when the market's tanking, everything is correlated. And what that means is that when the market's going down big, people just want to sell everything. If they've got, you know, a biotech stock, they've got a financial stock, they're just selling everything. And so this works in our favor when the stocks that we're long and short, let's say it's Coke and Pepsi, if we're long Coke and short Pepsi, when the market's going down big, they sort of return to their original historic relationship and we can make a small profit. Now we're not going to make a big killing no matter what we're doing because we're basically long something and short something. So if we're winning on the short stock, we're going to be losing pretty close to an equal amount on the long stock. However, we have an opportunity to profit if they return to their historical relationship. So essentially, if we have a account that's built up with a bunch of different pairs and the market has a big downturn kind of like the financial crisis in 2008 we have a chance to make a small profit but the big takeaway is that we have a very unlikely scenario where we're going to lose a lot of money because our accounts half long stock which we're going to lose on but we also got half the account short stock so at least we can imagine that we might at least break even in a large market downturn so when we're at market tops like we are right now sitting in August of 2015, the market's very vulnerable to a big downturn. So if we're pairs trading though, we can feel fairly comfortable that we don't have a lot of risk on the table the same way a guy might have who has a bunch of different mutual funds or stocks in his portfolio all long. So with pairs, we're going to have a regular small high percentage wins. This strategy has been very popular in hedge funds since the 80s and it's a very legitimate way to trade. The individual trader has an advantage because we can trade smaller than the big hedge funds. So we can get in and out of stocks, short and long stocks, much easier doing like say 100 lots than somebody trying to do you know, 50,000 shares or something like that. So because of our trade size and because we can get almost the same commissions as professional traders, we have a real advantage because we can trade it in smaller amounts and no one's really going to notice us. Also, sometimes some stocks are hard to borrow. We try to avoid those stocks, but a stock that's easy to short today, in other words, it's easy to borrow today, may tomorrow be hard to borrow. And so the smaller our size, the more likely it is that we're going to be able to short stocks and not run into a hard to borrow situation. So in general, this is a very successful, sound approach. We're not going to hit home runs, but we're going to make consistent, high probability returns. And also this reduced risk, because we're long half our account and short half our account, this gives us duration, right? 
when market's doing something that maybe catches us off guard, we're not going to panic the same way we would if, we, let's say, we were just long Coke. If we just had long Coke shares and the market started heading down, we're going to have a certain degree of panic. Whereas if we're long Pepsi and short Coke, it gives us duration. It gives us time to wait until we're right. So we don't necessarily have to take a loss right away the way someone who's long only might do. Because of this really sort of low risk in our account, if we have a, an account that's large enough, we can ask our broker to give us portfolio margin. If we had portfolio margin, our returns, even though they're small, can be multiplied by six times. And the reason this happens is that with portfolio margin, your broker basically looks at your account on an ongoing basis and says, okay, what if the market goes up two standard deviations, right? What's going to happen to this guy's account? Or what if the market goes down to standard deviation? What's going to happen to this guy's account? So let's say that, that the broker is first looking at what happens if the market goes up to standard deviations. He looks at each of your stocks. Let's say you're long Coke and short Pepsi. He's going to look and see, okay, if the market went up on the long stock, what's he going to make? On the short stock, what's he going to lose? And then let's say we have ABC company, we're long that, if the market goes up, we're going to make money on that, and we're short XYZ, so you're going to lose money on that. And then they just add that all up, and they say that's the risk this guy has to the upside. And because we have a lot more capital than the risk, because it's a very low risk trading approach, the broker's willing to give us something on the order of six times the money we actually have allocated in the short and long stocks. Then they'd also do the same thing on the downside. What if the market goes down to standard deviations? Again, they look at each of your stocks and what would happen under that scenario, and you add it all up. You add your shorts and your longs together. It doesn't look like you have a lot of risk, even if the market goes down to standard deviations. And so this, again, is why they allow you to get up to six. It's somewhere be actually between six and seven times the actual money you have in your account that you can put to work. And so even though some of these returns may look small, if you can leverage portfolio margin, we can actually make quite a good return from our efforts. Now here's an equity curve, and this, this is an equity curve of a lot of pairs trading over a number of years. I'm not showing this just to show you an equity curve, which looks pretty good. But the main thing I wanted you to take away from this is this area right here. It's actually a little bit steeper here than it is the rest of the equity curve out here. Now what this is here is uh, 2008 and the financial crisis. And implied volatility was really high. Volatility in many areas was high. And so the key takeaway here is that pairs trading when the market gets more volatile, we actually make more money. Volatility actually helps us in our pair trading. And so that's the main takeaway from this equity curve. All right, if you have any questions on the content of this video, you can reach me at john at consistentoptionsincome.com. And you can also check the website for more information, which is at consistentoptionsincome.com. Just click on the pairs trading tab. All right, coming up next, lesson two, pairs trading examples.